Hello, I'm Laura, a 27-year-old recently navigating life as a newly divorced woman. My journey with Larry began in college, where we shared classes and swiftly fell in love. Despite our strong bond, a shadow loomed over us, Larry's mother, Lily. From the start, Lily seemed to harbor an inexplicable dislike for me, meddling in our relationship, offering unsolicited advice, and making me feel unwelcome. I voiced my concerns to Larry countless times, but he struggled to confront his mother, torn between his loyalty to her and his love for me. Eventually, I resigned myself to endure Lily's criticisms, believing Larry might have been unintentionally fueling her negativity by sharing too much about our life. After five years of dating, we tied the knot, much to Lily's dismay. Despite her attempts to interfere, we managed to distance ourselves from her toxic presence for a while. Both Larry and I found success in our careers, but I yearned for something more personal, a creative and fulfilling pursuit. Drawing on my passion for design, I ventured into graphic design as a side project, keeping it under wraps while I figured out where it might take me. I invested in equipment and enrolled in courses without Larry's knowledge, confiding only in my best friend, Mary. She was incredibly supportive, offering encouragement and practical advice. Through her connections, I began to build a client base, which eased our financial pressures and allowed us a more comfortable lifestyle. However, Larry became increasingly distant, and I suspected he was hiding something. The first real sign of trouble came when Larry admitted to spending his entire paycheck on investments just a week after receiving it. We argued but patched things up temporarily. To help make ends meet, I put in extra hours at work. But the following month, Larry repeated the same behavior, and I found myself frustrated and confused. In a moment of anger, I lashed out, only to regret it later. But when Larry found himself without money for the fifth month in a row, I reached my breaking point. I had been meticulously managing our finances and working tirelessly, not just at my day job, but also on my growing graphic design business, which was becoming our main source of income. I confronted Larry, expressing my frustration and making it clear that I wouldn't bail him out this time. Our argument escalated, with accusations flying back and forth until Larry stormed out, leaving me to grapple with the turmoil of our crumbling relationship. Suspecting Lily's involvement, I decided to investigate. I discovered that Larry had been hiding his finances from me, telling lies about being broke. Their messages revealed Lily's relentless disparagement of me, labeling me as materialistic and insinuating that I was only with Larry for financial gain, ironically, I was the primary breadwinner. The truth left me reeling. Larry had gradually given in to Lily's manipulations, unknowingly providing her with more ammunition by sharing moments where I had expressed my frustrations. This betrayal was devastating, leaving me overwhelmed with hurt and confusion. I turned to Mary for solace and guidance. She listened intently, offering her unwavering support as I struggled to process the betrayal. The situation weighed heavily on me, and I found myself at a crossroads, uncertain of the best course of action. The next morning, with the luxury of a weekend ahead, Mary and I found comfort in the familiarity of a favorite movie. We indulged in simple pleasures, immersing ourselves in movies and enjoying culinary delights. Despite the nagging thoughts of the previous day's revelations, I made a conscious effort to set them aside, prioritizing the much-needed break from the stress and hardship I had been experiencing. However, our peaceful reprieve was short-lived. A call from Lily shattered the calm, her unwarranted attacks only serving to heighten the tension. Amidst the hostility, an unexpected proposal emerged, a 40-60th split of everything between Larry and me. It was a proposition that dripped with skepticism, clearly a test of my commitment to the marriage. Despite the audacity of her demand, it left me contemplating the next steps in what was becoming an increasingly difficult and painful situation. I agreed, willing to explore any possibility of salvaging what was left of our relationship. With a tentative acceptance, we set plans in motion, culminating in a scheduled meeting on Friday to formalize the arrangement. I was stunned by the turn my marriage had taken caught between disbelief and seething anger. How could Lily brand me a gold digger, and how could Larry stand by and allow such an accusation? I had stood by him through thick and thin, supporting his endeavors even when they led to losses. I had covered for him when he lied and shouldered the burden of our shared responsibilities, all while keeping my own side hustle a secret, waiting for the right moment to reveal it. 
Friday arrived quickly, and Mary accompanied me for support. When we arrived home, we found Lily, Larry, and a lawyer already there, finalizing the contract. As expected, the agreement mandated an equal division of assets with a clause prohibiting financial assistance between us. Reluctantly, I signed, knowing it would leave Larry scrambling financially. Predictably, problems ensued. Our communication was limited to curt words, the rift between us too deep to bridge. Larry attempted to reach out and mend the divide, but I remained distant, resentful of his complacency in the situation. As time passed, Larry's persistent attempts to reconnect grew tiresome, and the weight of our fractured relationship hung heavily over us. I eventually gave in. Will you please just talk to me? We can't keep going on like this, Larry pleaded, his voice filled with a longing that caught me off guard. It was jarring to hear him express how much he missed our connection, especially after he had willingly signed away our financial unity. What do you want me to say, Larry? I retorted, my frustration clear. Is that why you agreed to sever our finances completely? His silence was deafening, revealing the deep divide between us as we stood at the brink of our shattered marriage. I struggled with the weight of our choices, unsure if reconciliation was even possible. I just need to know where your loyalty lies, Laura, Larry implored. Despite all the issues caused by his mother, he still chose to side with her. It was a tough decision, but I made it clear that I wasn't going to bail him out this time. Larry reacted with indignation and defensiveness, but I stood firm. That month, I focused on paying off our major debts, leaving Larry to manage on his own. My graphic design side hustle was thriving, and I began to seriously consider quitting my day job. Meanwhile, Larry struggled, his portion of the pantry often bare. A part of me felt sympathy for him, but I couldn't ignore the choices he had made that led us here. Lily's unexpected visit threw me off balance. She stormed into my home, her face a mask of anger, and accused me of stealing from Larry. The words hit me like a slap in the face. I was immediately on the defensive, trying to keep my voice steady as I demanded to know what she was talking about. I decided that now was the time to lay it all out. I revealed my graphic design venture, explaining that I had been planning to surprise Larry with it to show him what I had accomplished. Thanks to Lily's constant meddling, that plan went down the drain. I was even going to use the money to buy her a car as a gesture of goodwill, to show her that I wasn't the person she thought I was. Lily looked taken aback but wasn't ready to relent just yet. She asked how much I made from this side business, her voice laced with suspicion. I answered truthfully, explaining that I had worked hard to build something successful, something I was proud of. All this time, I wasn't lying or trying to deceive anyone, I was simply trying to do something good, something positive. With that, I took a deep breath and reached into my bag, pulling out a set of divorce papers that I had been holding on to for this moment. The sight of them seemed to take Lily by surprise, but I was beyond caring about her reaction. I turned to Larry, who had been standing silently by, his expression a mix of guilt and resignation. I didn't want it to come to this, Larry, I said, my voice softening as I addressed him. I tried to make things work even after everything that's happened, but I can't keep doing this. I can't keep living under the shadow of your mother's influence, and I can't keep pretending that everything is okay, when it's not. I've worked hard to build a life for myself, and I deserve to be with someone who supports that, not someone who lets their mother tear us apart. Larry looked down, unable to meet my eyes. Lily opened her mouth to say something, but I cut her off before she could start. This isn't just about money, I continued. It's about respect, trust, and the foundation of a relationship that should have been built on mutual support. I've done everything I can to support you, Larry, even when things were tough but I need to take care of myself now. I need to protect what I've built. With those words, I handed the divorce papers to Larry. The silence that followed was heavy, filled with the weight of everything that had led us to this point. Lily looked at the papers, then at Larry, her face a mask of disbelief. I knew it wasn't going to be easy, and the road ahead would be filled with challenges, but I also knew that I couldn't keep sacrificing my own happiness and well-being for the sake of a relationship that was no longer healthy. I had taken the steps I needed to protect myself, and now it was time to move forward, whatever the future held. 
I was ready to face it on my own terms, with the knowledge that I had done everything I could to make things right. I had filed for divorce right after we signed the contract, quietly holding on to the papers until the right moment to reveal them. When I finally handed them to Larry, the shock on his face was unmistakable, but I felt no sympathy. I had given him every chance to make things right, and he had chosen his path. I expected Lily to be pleased, given how hard she had pushed for this separation. Instead, her expression shifted to one of fury as she realized the full consequences this would have for her son. I calmly informed them that I would be moving out in the next two weeks. I had made up my mind, and there was no going back. I agreed to continue splitting the remaining loan payments, but that was the extent of my commitment. Larry, clearly desperate, tried to plead with me, hoping to change my mind, but I remained resolute. I reminded him that this was the outcome of his choices and actions, and that we had both reached a point of no return. In the months that followed, I began to feel a sense of liberation from the toxic relationship that had been weighing me down for so long. Lily, as expected, tried to contest the divorce, likely hoping to salvage something from the situation. However, with our assets already legally separated, there was little for Larry to gain from the proceedings. In fact, he ended up losing more than he ever imagined, unable to keep up with the mortgage payments on the house. He was forced to sell it and move back in with his mother. As for me, my life took a turn for the better. My graphic design business began to flourish far beyond what I had initially envisioned. I started landing lucrative opportunities with big brands, and my client base expanded rapidly. It was a blissful and rewarding period for me, one that filled me with a sense of accomplishment and relief. I finally felt like I was in control of my life, free from the negativity and constant stress that had overshadowed my marriage. Every day, I felt grateful that I had something to fall back on. My side business, which had started as a small venture, had grown into a successful and profitable enterprise. This financial independence spared me from the fate Larry had to endure, and it allowed me to move forward without the burden of our past weighing me down. Larry's situation was quite different. With the household and his financial stability shattered, he struggled to adjust. Moving back in with his mother was a blow to his pride and I could only hope that this experience would serve as a lesson for him in the future. Perhaps he would learn the importance of responsibility, trust, and the consequences of allowing others to manipulate his decisions. But those lessons were no longer my concern. I was focused on building my own future now. I embraced the opportunities that lay ahead, excited about what was to come, the freedom to pursue my passions, the success of my business, and the peace that came with leaving a toxic situation behind filled me with a sense of fulfillment I hadn't felt in years. Life was finally moving in a positive direction, and I was determined to make the most of it. I surrounded myself with supportive friends like Mary, who had stood by me through thick and thin. Together, we celebrated the small victories and the big achievements, knowing that this new chapter in my life was just the beginning. Looking back, I realized how far I had come and how much I had grown. The painful experiences of the past had shaped me into a stronger, more resilient person. I was no longer the woman who had been manipulated and overshadowed by others. I was now someone who knew her worth, who understood the value of independence, and who was ready to take on the world with confidence. The future was bright, and I was ready to face it with open arms, no longer burdened by the mistakes and betrayals of the past. I was free to pursue my dreams and live life on my own terms, and that, more than anything, was the most rewarding part of this entire journey.